Hello everyone, I'm Marco Cantalou from DB Technologies and welcome to this tutorial about AuroraNet software. Today we talk about the matching functionality and is included in the 1.0 version of the software. If you really want to control and monitor and take the best out of your DB Technologies PA system, you want to start using RDNet protocol to control your systems. All you gotta do is you take your laptop, you use AuroraNet software, which is freely downloadable on our website, and then you use either a Control 2 hub or a Control 8 hub. When you want to connect a system to AuroraNet for the first time, you won't need the matching function. In fact, your Control 2 or 8 hub when on USB connection would just pop up in the workspace. If on Ethernet Control 8, all you gotta do is to click on the magnifying glass, Ethernet discovery, when it's just popping up, you go online, and your system will be up and running in seconds. But let's say you're on tour and you want to start not from scratch, but you want to start from the previous project, the one you made in the last gig, or maybe the project that you made at home beforehand. So if you want to save time on location and you don't want to use your precious data and your information like EQ, delay and settings, you maybe want to start from loading a project, stored in your hard drive and then going online live. So. Let's load a project into our workspace. Let's go to load, select a file, and then open. All of the position, colors, groups, and EQs have been stored, as well as the routing ID. Routing ID is accessible through the eye icon. Once selected, each item will show three series of numbers, like 1.1.1, 112, 113, and so on. The first digit represents the RDNet control hub, in this case is one as we're only using one controller. The second number is gonna be the channel number. The third one instead indicates the position of the speaker within that specific channel. This illustration represents how the system is being wired in real life. Channel one is for left, two is right, three is all of the subs in daisy chain, channel number four is the three front fields. We're only using one controller. So back to our project on AuroraNet. Let's now click the Ethernet Discovery button on the bottom right corner. This will scan all connected control hubs on the network. What we have now in our window is the project on the right of the screen, while all detected items will be shown on the left hand. So let's click Discovery on the one control height we have found on the network to see all of the single items. Since the real-world wiring order reflects our loaded project, then all of our speakers will be matching and shown in complete green. That means we can go online without performing any additional changes to our project. As you can see, the total amount of speakers on the left is the same as the one on the right. If you want to investigate further, we can always use the identify function both on the control 8 and on selected products such as the 16, 10 and other line arrays and subs from the DB Technologies portfolio. So clicking the little eye on an item will trigger the LED on the selected speaker. Now let's click the green button and confirm to go online. What if happens that all of your speakers and even your control 8 or 2 is highlighted in orange color even if all of the speakers are in the very same position, the wiring is the same, and you are absolutely sure you performed as well as the last time, well, you may be in the case that your Control 8 is using a different IP address, or maybe your Control 2 via USB is maybe using a different COM port. This also can happen when you have two different computers using the same interface hub via USB. So uh, let's see how to solve this. So let's scan the network for some Control 8s. Once the new one will show up with a different IP, all we need to do to make sure the software knows this is the new one is to simply take this one, drag and drop it on the older one. Overriding the virtual one with the real one will apply all of the current settings to the system. When both control and speakers are green, then you can proceed going online, clicking on the green button and then confirm. So let's now analyze a different case scenario. 
Let's assume that we are starting our console with the same project of last time, with three VOL208 as front fills. On show day, we suddenly realized we could use an extra front fill. So what we're gonna do is to add a fourth VOL208, and we're gonna wire it and daisy chain it right after the other threes. We're gonna use the same channel four. So let's scan the network for controls. Now click discovery on the control A that appeared. What we can expect this time is the detected item window will show us one more speaker on channel four. It's going to be highlined in orange, as you can see, with the ID 4.4, which is missing on the other hand. Also, please note that the total amount of items is 30, while our design project was only 29. To solve this, all you have to do is to just drag the new speaker in the correct position on the right-hand side of the screen, which is slot 4, fourth channel of your software window, and then go online. The new speaker will appear in the workspace without any setting applied yet. It is now easy to include it in the front fields group, for example, and then position it as we like. Select the speaker, click on the item button, in group, select the group, select the box, and confirm. Let's now have a look at a different scenario, one that is more likely to happen. In real life scenarios, we are using less speakers than the one we originally designed in the project. For example, we might want to use only two front fills instead of three. By doing so, channel number four will only see two speakers connected. Let's scan the system for control eight as usual and then hit discovery. This time, the matching window will simply show us that everything that has been detected is green and ready to play. On the right, however, we'll see that our software is expecting one more front field that is just not there. Also, check that the total amount of items detected are 28, while our project, as usual, had 29. This is by far the easiest match to solve. Since all of our detected items are green, we can simply hit the green button and then confirm to go online. Our workspace will show the extra front field grayed out. It might be useful to keep it there, just in case uh, in a future game we're gonna use this guy again. This way, we're not losing all settings such as filters and delay. But we can also delete it from the project by clicking item and then remove. This is where we're not planning to use it again. Now, what if we wanna replace an existing item in the project with a new one maybe with similar capabilities, and we want to migrate all of the settings of the previous one to the fresh new one. In this example, we use VOL 1610s as front fields, instead of the VOL 208s, because that's what we've been provided on the day of the show. The number is still three, but the model is different. Let's scan the system. Discovery. Since VOL 1610s and VOL 208 are very similar models, we want just to override them with the same processing. So to make this happen, hold Command or Mac or Control or Window and click on the newly added front fields from the first on top to the last one. Then simply drag them from detected to software, in the correct position, of course. Please note that the 208 have been moved to a warehouse section on the far right of the window. This way, their processing info are safe, in case you'll need to recall them in the future. Once we proceed to our workspace, please notice that the L1610 appear, while the L208 are now grayed out. Again, after we place them as we like, we can either get rid of the 208s or just let them sit there. Let's now see how to make the software aware that we moved and wired a certain speaker in a different channel than the one we originally stored and designed in the project. 
As you remember, our three front fields in the original design were supposed to be on channel 4. For some reason, the very same speakers are now under channel 7 of our control 8. This chapter will start involving a different method to solve mismatched situations, which means that we'll need to start manipulating items in our software section. Let's scan the system and then hit Discovery. The baseline here is to rearrange the speakers in our project in order to reflect the reality we are detecting in a given moment. So, let's go to our software area on the right, then select all of the orange front fills from top to bottom. Again, hold Command or Control key on window. Select all of them and then drag them on channel 7. Now, we have changed our project so it matches with the actual wiring and everything turned to green. We can go now online as usual. Okay, now let's imagine to run and wire both subwoofers and front fields on the same Arduinet channel. You know, it might sound crazy, but it can be very convenient on the location as long as we can daisy chain from our subwoofer into our front field, which is sitting conveniently right on top of it. Of course, we need to learn how to make the software at Rotonet aware of this new disposition. Okay, this is how we're going to set up our system for this case. Channel number one and number two will stay the same. Channel number three instead will change a little bit. We connect the first two subs, then the first front fill, followed by four subs, and then the central front fill. Then we keep going with four more subs and the last front fill. Once we discover our system and open the matching window, we'll see that the reality on the left differs quite a lot from the project on the right. To fix this, all we have to do is drag and drop the items on the software area to rearrange them exactly as they show up in the detected area. I suggest to use the routing IDs on the left as a reference to help you in this operation. So, let's take the first front field. This guy needs to go on position 3.3. Let's move to software items area, select the first front field from channel 4 and drag it into the position 3.3. Make sure you don't override a box, but you just put this in between two. Now, as you can see, it turned to be green, so it's match. Next up is a 3.8, which is the second front field. Let's go and take the second one in the software items area and drag it in the correct 3.8 position. Now, the last one is the last position which is 3.13, just drag it all the way down to 3.13. Now everything is green, everything is matched, and we're ready to go online. As you can see, the final positioning and processing stayed the same. One last case is when we decide to split our system, originally designed to be used with only one controller, under a network of controllers hubs. That can be very convenient on the field as we can make an easier wiring and run through all of the systems. As you can see this time, we decided to connect the whole PA left through a new control 8 and we're using channel number 1. Channel number 1 on the other hand will be empty while 2, 3 and 4 will stay the same as usual. Let's scan the system for our controls as usual and then discover. To match this new reality to our software project, let's hit Discovery on the first Control 8. As we can see, items on channel 1 didn't show up on the controller. Let's update our project by adding the second Control 8 we discovered. To make things easier, just click on the minus icon to collapse the view of the controls then drag the additional control 8 to the right. Since we know already which channel is being used for the left array, let's select all of them from their original position and then drag them on the second control, channel number 1. Now we can finally discover and go online with the whole system.
Everything is green, everything is being matched, and then we can go online. We have now the chance to rearrange the items as we want it. So we just drag the left on the original position, and then we're gonna have two control aids in the middle. These are the most common cases you might face once it comes on mixing an existing project with the PA you find in your real life. Of course, you can find different case scenarios and mix of those I just explained to you. For example, you are using more line arrays than you designed and also you are changing the model of the front fields and your control has a different IPs. So don't worry, to solve all of these issues, just use all of the information we just gave you and we just shared with you. One by one, in order to adapt your project to what you have in front of you on the show date. So again, thank you for your attention and see you at the next video. Ciao.